Hi, welcome to Art Marketers. This is Alexander, your host, and today we're introducing a very special guest, John Zorn with Arts Reach, who is the executive director. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing very well. Um, we're going to be having a webinar on Friday. I'm really looking forward to that, uh, and I'm looking forward to this interview. Now, speaking of webinars, that's going to be one of the hearts that we're going to be talking about in this podcast today about, you know, the difference between setting up virtual events and in-person. Before we do, let's talk a little bit about what you, how you got involved into the arts industry. Sure. Uh, well, I was a musician. I still am a musician. Um, I was getting my master's degree in clarinet performance, and I took a class in uh, theater management when I was in that program. And then one thing led to the next, and I started managing symphonies. Uh, I worked with the Detroit Symphony and the San Jose Symphony. And then uh, one day I woke up about 30 years ago and realized that no one was writing about arts management topics, or at least the ones that I was working on, like marketing and so on. So I started uh, writing a newsletter. Um, back then it was the dawn of desktop publishing. And uh, we printed that and sent it out uh, for a very long time. And then uh, we started doing conferences for the readers of newsletter. And uh, we were doing that for a very long time too, until something happened back in March of 2020. And so we had a pivot as they say, and now we're doing a, a series of webinars uh, for a membership. And I think that's so important to be able to be dynamic, especially in this day and age. Now, tell me a little bit about what the Arts Reach is specifically, for those who don't know. Okay. Well, right now, um, it's a membership organization. We have members from all over the world. And uh, we have a program called New Ways Forward, which includes about three webinars per month. Um, and if people can't make one of those webinars, uh, we send their, the recording of the webinar the next day so no one misses anything. Uh, and also we have this very interesting group of consultants, we call them arts allies. Hmm. And so our members are able to set up appointments with this group of about 30 consultants from all over the world uh, they can have as many appointments as they wish, and these uh, consultants are standing by to help our members with whatever challenges they have. Hmm. Do you know off the top of your head any challenges that you can think of that some of these people face? Well, it's across the board. You know, sometimes uh, they're looking to uh, start a capital campaign, for example, and we have a lot of um, people who are, are experts in fundraising and, and can uh, help troubleshoot how to get beyond barriers in a capital cam campaign. Um, some people need help with their e-marketing. And so we have experts um, in that area. And um, some people need help uh, designing their website. And guess what? Uh, Dream Warrior Group is uh, helping people design their websites better uh, at no, no extra cost. So um, the way it's set up, the membership in New Ways Forward, uh, your first month is free. Uh, so you can check it out, uh, sign up for uh, meetings with arts allies, uh, attend webinars, et cetera. And if, if you like what you're receiving during that first month, then your credit card will be charged $18 per month until you decide to cancel. Which is so that's super affordable if you think about just all that information that you're going to be giving people who might be struggling. I mean, that's super affordable. Well, we try to make it as affordable as possible, obviously, because our, our goal is to help as many groups as we can. That's amazing. Lo I always love to hear that. So then why don't we dive in? I mean, early, earlier you touched a little bit on how you had to pivot and we have to change. So I kind of wanted to dive into virtual events versus in-person events. Um, 
you know, I was kind of curious on what your take on them were and, you know, just what were some of the key differences that you found when setting up virtual events versus in-person events? Right. Well, you know, for in-person events, you have to worry a lot about food and drinks and hors d'oeuvres and all kinds of stuff that you don't have to worry about with the webinar because people are, uh, you know, on their own for their own food and drinks and hors d'oeuvres and whatever they want to do. Um, so that makes it easier, I guess, from my point of view. Uh, the, big, um, the big difference is that there's a lot of lead time that's required for an in-person event, right? You have to like rent the hotel and get all the speakers and they have to get plane reservations and all kinds of stuff that takes a long time, maybe five, six months worth. Whereas a webinar, you can really put it together in a week from start to finish. Um, so that's a really big difference. That's a really good one, especially seeming that, you know, when you're tied down with time, being able to set up a webinar, you can kind of, you, you can get more information out there in a faster period of time. That's true. Um, now, the downside of a webinar, you know, people aren't, aren't having drinks together, right? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, and there's a lot of uh, learning that happens over drinks, I think, or during the kind of in-person, relaxed, informal setting. 100%. Can't, can't really do that on a, on a webinar. But on the other hand, we can bring in speakers from all over the world who might not necessarily want to fly into a conference. Um, so that that's, that's the good news. And of course, uh, the good news is that audiences too can tune in from wherever they are and they don't have to fly in and they can wear anything they want or they can wear nothing if that's the way they like to roll. Business on the top, party on the bottom, right? You can you can kind of mix it up. Um, you know, I love that we're kind of talking about the pros and cons of a webinar. I was curious on what maybe your advice would be on how you can kind of keep people's attention. Because just as you were saying, you know, in-person events, you can have that drink. You're kind of forced to be engaged. But online, it can be a little bit harder to keep people engaged. Is there any kind of specific tool you use or tactic or strategy that helps keep people focused and engaged on a virtual event? Yes, uh, I think one of the things that we've used are polls. Those are those are really nice because you know people get a chance to um, well vote as it were, <laughs> uh, depending on whatever the you know questions are, but they can also see the results in real time. You know about uh, whatever the poll is asking. So that's kind of fun. Uh, so that that's one way to keep people engaged in, in what we're doing. Of course. And that leads me to my next question on what kind of tools do you use to host these webinars? There's so many tools, so much software out there. It's a little overwhelming. So if someone was to try to host a webinar, what kind of tools would you recommend um, for them to set up? Well, I can just tell you that we use GoToWebinar. Um, We've used that actually before the pandemic. We were doing these kinds of things before the pandemic and we're just used to it. Um, the thing I like about it is they have an 800 number. <laughs> so whenever, you know, there's a big problem and sometimes, you know, you have questions, you can't figure it out and I can call the 800 number and I, I get straightened out pretty quick. So that's what I like about GoToWebinar. I'm a big believer in 800 numbers. Oh, yeah, 100%. You got to have that customer support, right? Especially when it comes to your software. You got to be able to talk to somebody and figure out how to how to handle those problems when, it, when they arise. Yes, exactly. So then tell me a few of the topics that you would commonly see in the webinars that you host. Well, you know, we do um, webinars on every kind of topic under the sun these days, ticketing, marketing, fundraising, leadership, you know, um, all kinds of ideas and uh, insights we're providing. But, you know, I would say that there are probably some, some common denominators as it were in these uh, webinars that we're hosting. And, and one is, 
you can't really communicate enough these days, right? You have to over communicate because things are changing every day. Um, and it's really important to communicate not only with your staff members, your board, but also over communicate with your audience. Um, that, that's a through line uh, through all of our webinars that we've been hosting. Um, and the other one I would say is more understanding. You know, this, this, this is the silver lining as it were in, uh, in this situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, we have to be more understanding of people's needs and their personalities because you know, everyone adapts to change differently. And some people just, you know, go with the flow and other people um, can't do that so easily. So it's really important to be very understanding, whatever, however that shows up, like for example, uh, with your audience, uh, uh, relaxed ticket exchange policies, for example, are really important. You just have to bend over backwards um, to make make it work for everybody. A hundred percent. I think being a, being open to change is so important, especially because things are constantly changing around us. And so I think that's one of the beauties. Um, it's it's awesome that you had already kind of had a leg up on the game and you were able to do these virtual events prior. So you kind mm -hmm. of already had a little bit of insight or knowledge into how to run them, especially during the pandemic. You know, people really had to think creatively on how they could still service that same information, um, but not rely on the same tactics they had used previously. So that's so important. So we're going to be signing off pretty soon here, John. But before we go, can you let me know or let the audience know how people can get involved with ArtsReach? You know, if they want to get involved, if they want to be on a webinar, if they just want to sign up and learn more information, what, what would they do? Uh, sure. Uh, so we have a website and that's www.artsreach.com. People can go to the uh, contact page if they're interested in... Uh, presenting a webinar for us, with us, they can just uh, send us a little note about that uh, on the contact page. Now, if people want to join New Ways Forward, they can certainly do that just by going to our homepage and clicking on join now, sign up. As I said, uh, your first month is absolutely free and uh, give it a try for a month. See if you like it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Art Marketers, John. You have an excellent day, and we look forward to uh, seeing the other webinars that you have upcoming. Okay, Alex. Good Thanks. to talk with you today. Bye-bye.